right, so we're going to call this meeting to order. This is the meeting of the Buckeye Local School Board of Education. It's Tuesday, March 14th. This is our regular monthly meeting. And uh, we'll have the roll call, please. Marco. Here. Sincelich. Here. Stumpleman. Here. Manson. Here. Stump. Here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. There is a flag up above. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the freedom of the This meeting is a meeting of the Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in the agenda. Approval of minutes. <coughs> Resolved that the Buckeye Board of Education approve the minutes of the special meetings of February 4th, February 8th, and the regular meeting of February 14th. A motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. In the end, um, special and regular meetings of February 14th, please. Yes. Roll call. Sisselich? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Manson? Yes. Marco? Yes. Compliment? Yes. The following are recommendations that have been identified for approval as part of the consent agenda for this meeting. If a board member wishes to remove any item from this agenda for further discussion prior to taking action, please let either the superintendent or the board president know. And we are removing one item. We're removing 12D. And we are making a separate vote. For 12C. Thank you. Approval of the consent agenda. Resolve that the Buckeye Board of Education approve the consent agenda of March 14th as presented. Motion? So moved. Second? I'll second it. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Marco? Yes. Compliment? Yes. Sisselich? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Manson? Yes. Superintendent's informational items. Well, it's good to see everybody here tonight, and uh, we'd like to go ahead and recognize our students of the month. And so if our administrators could come forward, we'll see who gets here first. <laughs> Mr. Tudor, you're up. With the high school. Welcome everyone tonight. You know, I said when I came in tonight that we knew that we had good attendance uh, with our students of the month because they're students of the month, right? I mean, if they were students of the month, they would probably not want to be coming out in this weather. But students of the month are going to So, I have my students of the month is Nick Gorris from Sierra Grove. Um, again, as I say every month, these are chosen by our students, which I think holds a little extra value as they are extra, uh, respected by their peers. Um, Nick um, is, they're obviously both seniors. Nick uh, is in National Honor Society. Um, Nick is uh, in track and field, sad, uh, freshman mentors. He plans on going to either Akron or Kent to study aerospace engineering. So um, Nick is a uh, uh, very respectful, confident young man that uh, I know is going to do really well. So congratulations, Nick. <laughs> Sierra is um, number one in our class. Sierra is going to Vanderbilt um, this year on a, a significant scholarship due to her great service and a very, very high um, ACT score. Um, Sierra, um, is as good outside of the classroom as she is in it. 
Um, and I don't know that I've seen very many kids ever volunteer as much as she does, and in a way that's extremely leadership oriented. Um, she's involved in NHS, freshman mentors, um, you know, she uh, is the statistician for the baseball team, uh, something that kind of stands out about Sierra. Um, you know, last year, well before I even hardly knew Sierra, who Sierra was, uh, you know, as I was new last year, she had started this, um, you know, funding for military veterans that, um, you know, just exploded. And it was literally, it was her idea, and she ran the whole thing. So, uh, Sierra's the kind of, she's got, she's got the whole package. She's going to be very successful. So, congratulations, Sierra. team of teachers to write something about Ian. Ian is a humble young man to whom he has quite an impact on his team of teachers and peers alike. Beyond the fact that he is genuine, kind, respectful, and intelligent, he's just an overall likable young man. He does many extracurricular activities as well as continuing his academic success and has struck the perfect balance in his life. Ian participates in many activities both inside and outside of school. He is a part of the academic challenge team, is a forte of science questions, plays rec soccer, plays the trombone, and is a member of our 4-H organization where he has dabbled in improving his cooking skills, which I need to try. <laughs> he also enjoys writing, drawing, cooking, and acting. He is currently looking forward to a family vacation in Florida, especially after this weather. When asked what he sees himself doing in the future, Ian noted that although he is not completely sure, he has been recently inspired by the movie Hidden Figures and would like to one day pursue the field of math and possibly even work for NASA. Ian Mason. <laughs> Corey Anderson. Corey's a sixth grader at Mr. Peel's room. Corey Anderson was chosen as student of the month for many reasons. She's a very well-rounded student, not only getting good grades, but Corey always participates in class, always has her homework completed, and often does a little extra. She sets a great example for other students in her class academically and behaviorally. Corey is extremely helpful. She often volunteers to help her peers and usually takes the initiative to do so on her own. Congratulations, Corey Anderson. Buckeye Intermediate School Student of the Month. We'd like to take a little break right now so we can take some pictures of our Students of the Month. And any of you students who have rituals that you need to do for snow day, you might want to go home and get those started. Right now, the 
like there is school tomorrow. So. Uh, but we're not going to take a little break. So uh, let's get those pictures taken. Hey, um, our presentations. And Ms. Morgan, you're going to leave that for us? Sure. Our next uh, item is administrator presentations. And first up is Mr. Rich Finley with the Intermediate Building. Thanks. I just want to talk to you tonight about our fourth grade Chromebook rollout. Pardon me, I'm going to keep this with me here too in case I have trouble reading something. Um, but fourth grade this year got um, three carts of 30 Chromebooks apiece um, to kind of follow along with our two to one initiative that we've done for the intermediate. Uh, we started back in 14 and 15 with fifth grade, the two to one initiative. And two to one means two students for every one device. Um, then we felt, well, those kids are going to be in sixth grade the next year. We better get some devices in their hands. So then we did sixth grade the year after. And then fourth grade, um, we went with Chromebooks. And Chromebooks, we felt, were adequate for fourth grade. Um, they don't have as much capability as a math book, but they were really um, perfect for fourth grade. And so and they were cost effective, too. So that's why we went with those. Um, so why a two to one and not a one to one? Well, we felt at this age, uh, the decision for students to keep devices at school was probably the best thing. Uh, we felt the responsibility of these expensive uh, machines and the general care should be with our tech department and uh, like the recharging and basic care should be left up to the adult staff at school rather than giving them to our kids and having them take them home. Could be lots of issues with that and could have some spills on it or some things happen with that. So we decided to keep it at school. Um, and also, not all instruction will be computer driven, um, as it is sometimes with the one to one. Um, students this age aren't always required to do all their work online, so they will still do pen, plenty of uh, paper and pencil assignments as well in school. Um, so, we want a nice balance. And then also, um, but you know, doing a two to one will still give all the students access to technology during the school day. And how are these devices being utilized? They're being utilized to teach our students the most important computer skills. Uh, typing and formatted documents, internet research, uh, emailing, and computer ethics. Um, they're also using them for online educational programs such as Moby Max, Khan Academy, uh, News Outlet. There's many, many of them to use. And, but these are really important because they, they really do help differentiate learning for our students and can individualize things um, more so than maybe a textbook. Students are learning important computer skills too, such as creating presentations, researching topics, and collaborating with other students on share, shared Google documents, like assignments and projects. And why are we pushing to put technology in students' hands? Well, we feel this is a little more expanding than, say, a textbook. Textbook can be a little limiting. There's only so much knowledge in the textbook. Um, and here they have a world of knowledge at their fingertips, and it's just a wonderful device. Um, and we want our kids to be 21st century learners and uh, to be prepared as best as possible uh, with skills for life and career for school. And also, it's a great way to prepare for our state on our testing. And then I've added a few pictures of our, our students in action here. <coughs> and just want to thank the board and our community here for for their continued investment in technology for our schools. That's my presentation. Any questions, Mr. Kimmel? Thank you, Mr. Kimmel. Sure, you're welcome. Next up is Gabe Tudor. So I thought I'd just take a minute and uh, share with you some of the exciting things that are happening at the high school. Um, and, uh, you know, really a couple different things in, you know, uh, Paul and I's uh, first two years here that we've uh, been very excited to accomplish with the staff and you know, try to share some of those. So one of the things we've done is we've really done some curriculum revisions in the past few years. Um, really one of the focuses was trying to increase our uh, AP and our CCP um, enrollments and really try to keep our kids in our uh, building as much as possible, but providing them opportunities. And so we've really tried to do that. As you can see, um, uh, we're pretty excited that this year um, we 
increased our AP enrollment. We are at uh, seven classes running this year. Um, and with you know, about 30 when we came in, you know, that's what we had when we came in last year to over 180. And then next year we're adding four more classes. Uh, I'm sorry, three more classes. So we're at eight, we'll go to 11. Um, AP options for our kids. Um, CCP wise, we really worked hard um, to get our teachers in our building teaching our kids as much as possible. So we have uh, four, and next year we'll have five teachers that are actually teaching um, college classes through uh, local university tri and we partners with for that. But yet they are totally our teachers, um, and uh, they do a great job. And next year we will be adding CCP Spanish uh, as our as our fifth teacher and our fifth uh, opportunity for um, CCP in the, in the building, which will move us to nine, uh, which has really helped to the fact we're, we're about 75 students larger in the building every day uh, because the kids aren't leaving to go elsewhere for college because they can get what they need right here um, at Buckeye. So we're pretty excited about that. Next year, we're, um, that's okay. We can, there's a couple other options there, but Vicky's moving forward. Or <laughs> so, uh, you know, no, it's okay. Uh, we, we've got um, just in, in summary, we, we continue to add things to the careers, and we're very thankful for our partnership with them. Next year, we're adding biomedical science, which is kind of like a forensic science, uh, which is at no cost to us as the district, and we are um, adding that next year. And we're very excited about that, as that's an elective science course for our students. Another thing that we've done this year is we've really um, implemented professional learning communities, which is, um, in a nutshell, it's an opportunity for high school teachers to meet with other high school teachers and continue to work on their effectiveness. Uh, we link them together as departments, and it's kind of made the most sense to do it that way. And uh, I've been so excited with the results of that. We've been able to, you know, uh, as, as departments uh, improve our instruction, work through common assessments, really kind of just review what we do and think about is it the most effective way, and if it's not, we, we, we tweak it. It's been just a great um, opportunity. And the reason it's been great is because of the staff. We have a great staff at the high school, and you know we've done a lot of changes in these first two years, but they've done they They've been the ones that have really just um, you know bought in and, and really been willing to you know, think about ways that we can improve and, and serve the kids, which has been great. We also use that time for student assistance um, and other student activities. It's, it's a 25 minutes at the end of the day, kind of like what the junior high has, um, but we, you know, uh, we have that time also. That's when our teachers meet and kind of organize them so they can do that. We will either continue that next year or we are considering it's part of the survey that maybe some of you have taken for the community. We consider doing a one hour late arrival um, occasionally just for the high school to not have the Buckeye period part of the day, but to allow the, the teachers to continue the profession. So we'll see what happens, and either way, we'll, you know, it's a value to us, so we'll figure out a way to, to make sure we continue. Uh, technology, we, um, you know, we are not one-to-one -one yet. Next year, ninth and 10th grade, we'll go one-to-one, -to -one. Uh, but we've already made some exciting changes that we can we really can see uh, being impactful. Um, our media center looks entirely different. Uh, we've removed some um, some books and created some space. Uh, we now have kind of a real modern looking you know area for uh, to sit and, and, and do things in the media center. Um, we hope to continue to you know add to that. We really kind of want to be like a student union approach where that's a place kids want to go. You know we wonder in some ways that is that some place they can even go after school. We're not there yet, but you know depending on what our building becomes and the classes that we offer, is that something we consider? We have four more Chromebook carts this year um, that has allowed for more use, and then obviously next year we go one to one. And we've really been pushing uh, Google Apps for Education. Our staff has done a great job of trying to, to use that as, as much as possible. Um, Google Classroom, which is a great way for our uh, teachers to communicate, they've been doing a, a great job of that and, and uh, continuing to use, to use those sites. And our last thing is our Buckeye. Uh, uh, parent group. We started meeting right after um, Nicole and I uh, came in last year, once a month with parents, just an opportunity to hear from them and, and also share some things that were going on. And what's been exciting about that is that's led to um, really, uh, I did, we really identified as a parent group opportunities to volunteer and uh, we have a very active parent group at this point, which is pretty exciting. That's even led us to, we kind of combined with the band and um, 
music and drama and some other departments that aren't technically a part of a 501c3 and create the 501c3, uh, similar to what the athletic boosters have, which allows us an easier way to fundraise. Um, you know, specifically right now we're fundraising for our after prom, which we did last year for the first time, and we'll be doing it again. It's an alternative. It's a great, safe place for kids to be after prom. Um, and the reason I put Lake Erie Monster Center is that's what we just used for the first time. Since we got our 501c3, you have to have one of those to use uh, Lake Erie Monsters. We were able to go up. The band helped us out a ton. Um, Mr. King uh, really uh, spearheaded the organization of this. Um, we helped do the 50 50 at uh, Lake Ray Monsters, and they give us a, a, a portion of the proceeds. And we raised over $800 for the after prom in one evening. And the band got to play um, uh, right on the floor, so that was a really cool experience. So uh, we're excited about that as well. So, that's it. so, good things happen with the high school. It's, uh, it's an exciting time. It's really because of the people, the students, and the staff. Thanks. Thank you. So, good, good question. So, CCP is College Credit Plus. That's a state initiative um, that, you know, basically the goal it started, you know, several years ago was to try to make high school seniors be able to be high school or college sophomores when they graduate. Um, it's even extended beyond that now. Those are college courses that can be taught by the colleges or it can be taught by our staff as long as they meet the right qualifications that the college sets and the state requires. And so you could be in an English composition class, you can get a high school credit, and you can get a three hour college credit at the same time. That's CCP. AP is advanced placement, which has been around longer than CCP. Advanced placement is um, more of a nationally recognized curriculum uh, that you know all over the United States is actually owned by the college board, which is the same people that made the SAT test. Um, and so, with AP, you're in a rigorous class and uh, with a very rigorous curriculum, and then you take an exam at the end of the year, and if you would happen to get a good enough score, which is picked out of five or three or better, and then depending on what college you go to, but you, you likely would get college credit for it, just like you would see CCP. Which is better, it, it really depends. Uh, and that's what we tell our students. CCP is great if you know you're gonna stay in state and you're gonna go to a state university, because they will accept it as part of the state requirement. Um, if you might go out of state or to a private college, we usually promote AP uh, because there's no guarantee that things will be accepted outside of the state of Ohio. Uh, so we usually tell our kids to do a little of both, and we try to go to promote that. And, and then, you know, some, as they get older, they start to feel a little more. Next up. Next up is Mr. Reisner with Athletics. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad I can get this report out. I'll give you just a little bit of extra stuff I just got today. So it's pretty interesting. But well, our, our team this winter did fantastic. Um, as we start off here, we, we'll notice that the, uh, our boys basketball team, they took the first in the conference for the 13-3. 19-5 overall. Uh, they won the sectionals, and they, unfortunately, they lost to Bay in the district semis. But that stuff does happen. And right now, I'm going to say I'm sorry for not putting names on here, but the kids have not had their awards yet, so we don't want to stop the public here yet. But uh, conference-wise, we had two first-place team, one player on second, one honorable mention. And our coach, Tom Harrington, got the coach of the year. Uh, also, in the district area, we have one player that took second, one player third, and one honorable mention. So that's that's pretty good credit to what we had out there playing. Our girls took second place in the conference, 13-3, same as the boys. Unfortunately, Keystone went 
Uh, all right, they just lost their first sectional game uh, against Padua uh, in the finals there, 68-36. Uh, to 36. They played hard, but uh, Padua is a pretty tough team to play. So. And of course, we'll let you know here, we have two uh, four-year letter winners. That was Dupy uh, and Hartley. I can give that name and number out because that's just out there. We have one in first place conference, one in second place conference, and one in the honorable mention. And I've got two kids that made district honorable uh, mention. Boys wrestling, first place conference champs. Now it's going to get really interesting because this piece of paper that I handed to everybody here was everything from our, our wrestling coach. And of course, we had nine qualifiers that went to districts. Uh, Eric Bartos uh, placed fifth in state, which is great. But conference-wise, we had two wrestlers that were first team, uh, two second place, and then we had five in our members. But then I got this here today, which is unbelievable here. Uh, Eric Bartos is a three-time state placer. He also is a 51 season wins record, and he broke the school record, and he's also uh, got the Medina County record. Uh, we have nine guys going to uh, the All-Star match this Saturday, or March 16th, I'm sorry. Let's see, Eric Bartos was, has been nominated for the Lorraine County Wrestlers, Coaches, Officials Association for Division Two of the Year. Eric, Eric Bartos, Bartos was nominated for the Ski Senior Scholarship Award. We won that. <coughs> Our assistant coach, Steve uh, Rabanic, has been nominated for Lorraine County Assistant Coach of the Year. Uh, and Steve Bartos is put in the Hall of Fame for the Youth Wrestling at Lorraine County. Right now we have uh, 12, 12 kids who are going to state for junior high qualifiers. And for the youth group, we have 21 kids going for state playoffs this week. So that's just part of what's going on with Buckeye here at the wrestling program, which is getting better and better. Rules cross country. I think I messed that up as gymnastics. <laughs> Whoops. They, for the first time, uh, they advanced in district. They took second in section. Uh, they're unbelievable to watch. Now they're cross, they're cross country too, but their gymnastics team <laughs> is really good. My mistake. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that one. Uh, and we had one girl who qualified for a state qualifier. So they did very well this year. So it's it's good. They had 15 girls on the team. Uh, they all lettered. They all did, they did fantastic. And it was fun to watch. Bowling team. Uh, there's boys took seventh in their conference, Division Two, and the girls took ninth. And they don't have too much giving back to me on that one. That is a close score also. This is the fun part. I always enjoy this one. Academic achievements. Uh, in basketball, we had five PAC scholars. The team average is 3.424. Girls basketball, PAC scholars are eight, and the average is 3.67. Wrestling, we had four PAC scholars. Uh, the average GPA is 3.692. Gymnastics, they don't get that part of the pack, so, but their team average is 3.785. Bowling is 3.265. Cheerleaders is 3.32. They had four pack scholars. And we have one swimmer who's placed 10th in district. I didn't have that up in there or a picture for it put on there. Uh, but she's, her GPA is 3.2. Four, five, five, and she's a freshman. So, place 10th in district. So, we're looking forward to see how she does. 
and I have another eighth grader who is interested in swimming, so we might have two people on our swim team. <laughs> All right, we, in high school we had 119 participants. Uh, Pack scholars 21, average is 3.52. Down to junior high, we had 66 participants. Boys went 10 and 7, eighth graders went 8 and 9. Girls, seventh graders went seven and seven. Our eighth graders, they did a very good job. 18 and one, they went first in place in the back. And our boys' junior high wrestling team was just, they just, biggest spread ever between first and second in the conference tech championship. And that's all I have. Anything else? Great year, great year for us. And our last administrator presenting is Dr. Collins. I um, have some additional people who are going to be presenting. Um, uh, I'm going to first kind of summarize what we have going on. Um, and then Mrs. Bevan is going to talk about our science committee that has been working this year. Um, and then Mrs. Joby is going to talk about our K6 technology curriculum. And Mrs. Hartwell and I are going to talk to you about K3 science and what you have on the agenda to talk today. So um, just to quickly summarize, we are in year one and two of a science adoption. So we were hoping to be able to make a big K8 purchase this summer, which would finish us out because we did 912 under Ms. Kuppelman before she retired. Um, so I wanted to kind of keep the science um, going on the same cycle. So that's what we're working towards right now. Um, our teachers have done some piloting, which Mrs. is going to talk about in a minute. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to be there to make a purchase this summer for grades four through eight, uh, but we are looking at what we need to do in the fall to be prepared to make an adoption for grades four through eight as soon as possible. At grades K through three, though, um, and Mrs. Hartwell can speak to this a little more. When we started the year, uh, we talked about what they were already doing in science. They had been using Sangari, kind of. It wasn't totally standards aligned, so it was kind of if you were being used and to what extent. Um, and Mrs. Hartwell and I talked about how uh, her teachers would respond to doing something different with science. So not like a traditional science program, but something different that would fit our needs in Buckeye. So, uh, Ms. Harwell, can you tell them how your schedule is currently and what we're looking at doing the schedule next year to work in some science? Um, we actually started looking at materials early in the year and do on form and our staff development days at some science materials. Currently, we have, and honestly, the major focus at the primary is that strong literature-based language arts and math. Science and social studies at this point are separate periods within our school day. What we're looking at doing is taking these materials, and the teachers have begun working on units and mapping out where the science and social studies will fit within our language arts program. So they're working on integrating them together, which is nice because we don't spend quite as much time on the science and social studies, but fitting it in to what we <coughs> need is a win-win. So we'll have larger blocks, today will not be as choppy as what it is now. And the teachers are very excited. And a lot of the topics um, in our, we kind of have a lot of readers with the Wonders program, and they have a lot of science and social studies topics. So we feel like the picture perfect science, we can pull in and supplement. Because teachers right now, because the Sandari wasn't closely aligned with Common Core, teachers were pulling in a lot of stuff. So we're just laying it out ahead of time for next year. So from the students' experience, the way that we're currently teaching science, the way that we're currently teaching in K3 is I go to math time, I go to language arts time, I go to social studies time, I go to science time, which is more typical at the secondary level. But for elementary level kids, seeing those as very separate things is, is not quite what we want them to do. We want them to start pulling those things together. So with the units that are in these books, this isn't a program, 
It's not a textbook. What they are, though, are aligned units that focus on literacy. They also have the lab components and the inquiry components. So where we see this going is teachers having classroom sets of science-oriented libraries. Um, and we're looking at some donation possibilities, grant funding, to supply all of these libraries. So it's, 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 it's very innovative right now compared to what other schools are doing, where they're still separating out that science. And we're just, we're really excited about what that's going to look like for game three. Um, so, Mrs. Bevan, if you would like to talk about the science committee. Sure. I uh, thank you for having me tonight. I, I have to tell you that picture I took a few weeks ago on very similar days to what we're having today. <laughs> 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 Uh, we took a tour of the Buckeye Pond because some of our subterrans have never seen it and I wanted them to collect samples for a future project. So that's our, our first picture. But yes, uh, we began our science committee this year. You can see our committee members up there. Our leader is Dr. Collins. From the high school, we have David Binkley, the junior high, myself, Carrie Hosek, and Katie Middlemas. From the intermediate, we have Mr. Rich Finley, Melissa Betrick, and from the primary, Nora Apple. So we have some representation from all of our districts. Our goals, the biggest goal is to support our science teachers and our students as the needs continue to change. Our students are going to be entering a society that's very technologically advanced and we want to make sure that we're meeting their needs in the science world as well. So one of the main ways we can do that is by providing professional development to our teachers. The first bullet point up there is the National Science Teachers Association. There was a, the, NST con the NSTA conference was in Columbus this year, one of the best, which was very unique and great for us so that we could send some teachers there and it was close to home. I believe Buckeye was able to send six staff members, including Christina and myself. And most of the pictures you'll see in this small presentation were inspired from that NSTA and, and things that I saw there that I, I wanted to try out for students. So this picture on this slide is actually taken with a slow motion camera. The students create uh, polymer bouncy balls and they have the options of what they can use and how many and what amounts of each ingredient to see who can get the highest bounce. So that's pretty neat. The students always seem to guess, if they're just looking at it, they always guess the lower number and then they look at the camera and saw how high the ball really went. So that was pretty cool. Uh, the, some of our students also went to Black River for a training with NASA. And we also have the NEOSS, so the Northeast Ohio Science Teachers Network Meeting. Other goals for our science committee, like Dr. Collins touched upon, we're looking to update our laboratory supplies and also to look for a new curriculum program that has more of an online component. So those are the biggest things we're looking for. This, that last slide, the NSTA, those are just some of the other pictures that I was able to snap while we were there. Uh, they showed a way you can teach students more about waves, wavelength, and frequency with lasers and those little protractor cups. So that was kind of neat to see. Some other projects with distillation, and that one at the top, that was just a regular syrup bottle, but they were able to show some things with pressure. Our meeting, so I, I let me talk about the picture first. This was another activity that I took away from the NSTA conference in Columbus. It's a way to show students moon phases and to allow them to try to determine where should they be or where should a certain moon phase be based on where the Earth is positioned as well as the Sun. So that was a fun one to go through with them and make it a little more meaningful and engaging to them. <coughs> um, those are two links there, the one for the laboratory inventory. We're asking each school to take an inventory of what supplies we currently have and are readily available. And the second link there is to make a wish list sustainable materials that can be beneficial to have in our science classrooms and labs. And lastly, as far as the curriculum program is concerned, we piloted and we trialed STEM scopes for the last couple of weeks. And there are a lot of pros to it, a lot of, like, a lot of things that we really enjoy. There are also a couple of concerns we still had, so we don't want to rush into a decision and accept that program if we're if there might be one out there that better fits our needs. So now we're looking into fusion. I think we've also talked about amplifier a little bit. So we just want to make sure we make the best decision before we spend any time. I think that's about it. Last little plug here. The first day of school next year is a solar eclipse. I have 
have the glasses ready to go for the junior high, so we're starting with the bang next year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Laura. Um, I, I got to tell you, I said it once before, our science content knowledge, the teachers who are voluntarily participating in that curriculum committee, uh, we're meeting after school, we keep it for an hour, we cut off at that hour mark, they're coming, they're, and they're just, they're full of expertise, it's amazing. So. Um, Mrs. Doty is going to talk about our K-6 technology curriculum that you're also approving tonight on the agenda. Hopefully, it's, it's on the agenda. Dr. Collins and I have been working with the teachers of various grade levels to come up with a strategy, a plan for how we want our students to progress through learning various technologies as opposed to hit and miss where every teacher feels like they're covering the same thing the teacher did before. So they are based on the ISTE standards, that's the International Society for Technology Education, and those are kind of their main standards. Um, if you go to the next slide, specifically in our draft program, <coughs> we include keyboard and mouse skills, digital citizenship, through um, common sense media that provides lessons at various grade levels, um, responsibly and safely using the internet and electronic resources, using a variety of software programs, some of which Mr. Finley highlighted in his um, presentation, uh, doing some computer coding or programming, using technology to write, create, and work collaboratively, and then appropriately searching for and citing sources that they find. And then I put a link to our draft uh, technology curriculum, which I believe that you all have copies of. So I'm just, I'm very excited at seeing the progression. And we've already had some really great comments from some of the things that the teachers implemented last year in the primary school. We're already seeing the results. The fourth grade teachers recently said that um, they were nervous. They went to do their first big typing assignment, a five paragraph essay, and they were quite concerned about what would happen because they hadn't had time to get to keyboarding skills yet. And they said, we pulled them out, and all of a sudden the kids got their hands on Cobra when they're typing away, and the teacher's like, yes, go primary, because they knew that the primary teachers had really helped those kids' skills, so they were very happy with that. And the last thing that I have to mention is we also have the math committee going at the same time. So uh, they're in year one in that we are researching. They've gone to the Ohio Council for Teachers and Mathematics conferences. It's a little learning year for them. So next year they'll be looking at piloting and going from there. Lots of stuff coming out. So thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on um, it's so good to see a progression for technology. I know that's something that we've been wanting to do for a number of years. So good job being there together. On that that uh, technology curriculum. A lot of things in there. These uh, young kids are being taught that how many bus stops? <laughs> <laughs> I've been really excited when the teachers have been inviting me to come in and help out in their classroom. I've seen second graders creating Google presentations about their favorite Americans and going, wow, they're doing some really great stuff. Well, thank you to all of our administrators for uh, the presentation. It's amazing how many uh, things are happening in our district and really moving us forward for our students to be able to compete in a competitive world. So thank you all for a lot of great information tonight. Uh, item number C is important dates. Uh, I don't have this one on there, but I just want to remind everyone we have early release tomorrow. So the students will be arriving uh, home one hour early. Uh, spring break begins March 27th to the 31st, 2017. And then we also have a Board of Education special meeting next Wednesday, March 22nd, from 5 to 8 p.m. at the board office. And then uh, next on our list is an D special guest. We have Laura Kettering and Katie Taylor here from the Dinah County District Library. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to the board, um, and I appreciate the graciousness that you've extended to me. I've got just a little bit of information here to share with you. Too much of your time. Um, okay. um, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about um, the fact that the Nevada County District Library has a renewal levy on the ballot on May 2nd, um, and we are looking to renew our existing funding and add an additional quarter mil um, to that. This levy accounts for 60% of our funding um, at the library. 
and our current 10-year rent will expire at the end of 2017. The additional quarter mill will cost about $8.75 more per year per $100,000 of assessment. <coughs> which basically amounts to the cost of a couple Starbucks coffee or maybe one fast food lunch uh, for the entire year. And what we're going to be doing with this quarter mill additional amount is to continue and expand services that we offer at the library that members value. Um, including free events for all ages, like more story times, encouraging that early literacy, and a dynamic summer reading game uh, for all ages of children. We'll be incorporating more STEM and STEAM events to help students prepare for success in um, future industry, and we'll also be continuing and increasing our community outreach with uh, partnerships with local agencies, including the Buckeye Local Schools, with our kindergarten reading readiness program, our ROCKS program, and also our One Book, One Community initiative with the United Way. Just to give you a quick idea of the impact that the public library has on your area youth, in 2016 for our summer reading game, we had over 9,000 children and teens participate in our reading game, and collectively they read more than 12 years and four months if you combine all their reading programs on. Um, if our local funding is not renewed and expires at the end of 2017, uh, the Medina County District Library will be forced to make sizable cuts since that's 60% of our revenue. And that could include um, things such as decreasing the number of items that we purchase for our collections, uh, having fewer open hours of operation or closing some locations, and eliminating programs such as story science and summer reading. Uh, but I want to leave you with one example of how the Buckeye Library, in particular, affects the um, youth here at, in Medina County. Just recently, we had a former Buckeye student come into the library to say hi to one of the librarians there. He was a person who would come in after school on a regular basis and stay for a couple hours each day. And when she asked him, well, why the visit? He said, well, I had to come and say hi. You were like my second mom. So um, I just leave you with that story. And if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. I'll stay as well at the end of the meeting. So I'm happy to talk with anyone individually. And you can always come see me at the Buckeye Library, too. So please go and vote on the Thank you. I have a couple of updates here. Item E. First of all, we had Buckeye Day um, last last weekend, and I just want to thank uh, Vicki Calvin for all the work she had put into organizing and uh, getting everything ready to go. It was a fantastic uh, showing for, with a great attendance, as well as uh, highlighting the amazing work our students are able to do with their art, as well as their music performances. So just thank them for the performance, as well as for everyone coming out and being part of that. Also, uh, item number two is the community survey. We have a survey out there. If you're not familiar with that, we're asking for our input from our community. And if uh, you need the link, you can certainly email me, or you can go to our district webpage on the main page. You'll see a link at the top for the, uh, the Buckeye survey. So please uh, participate in that. We are closing that on Sunday, uh, March 19th. That's all I have for information items. Thank you. Financial Advisory Committee update. Um, John? Sure. Uh, we are meeting. Uh, but we uh, had a presentation on athletics. Carolyn uh, brought out some numbers. Uh, for the next meet meeting, she's going to get some comparables on those numbers so we can compare some apples to apples. And we're also going to be uh, revisiting school fees for Stephen gave us a ton of information. And we're going to be uh, getting finished up looking at that, we'll probably have some more questions for this team uh, as well at that meeting. And we are still looking for a community member from uh, Valley City who wants to serve on the financial advisory committee. So then, if you know anyone out there, or there's anyone out there, please uh, contact that. And that is all. And so the next meeting is April 4th at 6.30 in the Board of Education Conference. Okay. Public participation. The public is invited to speak to any of the agenda items and other school topics at this time.
comments should be limited to three minutes. Direct questions will not be answered by the Board of Education members at this time. However, answers will be given at a later date as appropriate. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak this evening? Dr. Collins? I know, I'm, I'm speaking as a parent now, um, uh, camp parent for Camp Convention. Um, Amy is our camp director. This year, it's the first year Buckeye has had camp convention. We were one of the last districts in the county to bring it in, but we are having a ton of success and a ton of interest from the kids, which is so exciting. Um, Amy is just going to take a minute to explain about the camp. Sure. Uh, camp convention is run through the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and it will be at Buckeye July 31st through August 4th. And it's for students who will be entering grades one through six next year. We also will have some helpers that are students in grades seven, eight, nine, and then some interns that are grades uh, 10 through college. And we've already had some interest from college folks that are Buckeye grads, so I'm very excited about that. Um, we'll have two Buckeye teachers at least, depending on our numbers, who will be teaching the various sections. One of the things they're doing is a duct tape billionaire, and there's a launch where we're going to be launching some water rockets and some other things that will be going on that week. But we're just really excited about the number of people that have talked to us. Uh, Christina and I were at Buckeye Day promoting the event, and we made uh, 200 balloon animals, so we were well received there. <laughs> we had a lot of fun and talked to a lot of parents. Um, we've also had some success raising scholarship money for students who maybe can't afford this camp but would really benefit from it. And I think at this point we have funded eight students fully for the program for the summer with scholarship money. And one of those is due to a uh, family in Buckeye that said we're going to, you know, we'd like to pay for one entire ch other child besides our own, which was very nice. So, yeah, we're just very excited about everything that's that's happening around it and the excitement in the community. And we really want to thank the staff for their participation in the fundraiser, the fact that I think staff alone, we were able to raise almost $1,400 from the staff of Buckeye. So um, it's very good. Okay, the opportunity to wear jeans for a week. They like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Can folks still register? Yes. Child for that? And how do they go about doing that? Um, there is a, actually, if they go to campinvention.org, they can register directly there. And if they register before March 20th, there's a $25 discount. Anyone else from the public wish to speak tonight? Alright, we'll continue with the treasurer's report. I'm asking the board to approve the uh, internal budgets and then certificates of the appropriations that have been filed to the county auditor that are in the um, treasurer's office. I'm also asking the board of education to approve the tax rates um, for July of 2017 <clears throat> for 63.6 uh, .6 total, 51.7 for the first half, 51.7 for the second half, uh, emergency 7.9 for both halves, general inside millage 3.3, permanent improvement 1 mil, and bond retirement 4 mils. Motion on that? Motion. Second? Second. Any uh, questions, comments, explanations? Yes. Um, even though the um, community has voted in 63.6 .6 mills to Buckeye, we are only collecting 20 mills from the residents for the general fund. The emergency levy is shown here is 7.9. If everybody remembers we passed the renewal and as of January of 18, that'll go down to 7.6. So next year when you pass this resolution, it'll be 7.6. Um, the inside millage and the permanent improvement are set by um, by a revised code. The bond retirement, um, nobody remembers, but I do. Um, it was five and a half mills when it was passed back in 1999. We've never gone to 5.5 mills, um, and I believe next year this should drop off. All right. Thank you. Any questions from board members? All right, then roll call. This 
Sellers? Yes. Manson? Yes. Barkov? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Duncan? Yes. And we'll move on to the superintendent's recommendations. Okay. I have a, item A is approval of Buckeye Preschool Parent Handbook for 2017-18. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the Buckeye Preschool Handbook. The 2017-18 school year as presented, a copy of the handbook will be attached to board members' agendas as Appendix A. Item B is approval to advertise for bids. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education allow the superintendent to advertise for bids for the ceiling of the elementary exterior block walls. And I'm skipping C and we remove D, uh, the original D, so now I'm going to re-letter these. Uh, item D, recognition of booster support organizations. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the request from the following organizations. We recognize as booster support organizations which support the curricular and extracurricular endeavors of our students for 2016-17 school year as the Buckeye Band Boosters. Item E is approval for security updates. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve Redshift Technologies for a sum of 97721 to upgrade and increase security cameras across the district. This purchase is exempt from the bidding process due to security and technology exemption clause in Ohio Revised Code 149.433. Item F, approval to advertise for bids, resolve the Bucket Board of Education, allow the superintendent to advertise for bids for completing the HVAC of the Buckeye High School not to exceed $120,000. Item G, approval of student curriculum, resolve the Bucket Board of Education, approve the technology curriculum designed for grades K through six as submitted by Dr. Christina Collins. A copy of the curriculum will be attached to board members' agendas as Appendix D. Item H, adoption of student textbooks. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education adopt the attached list of science textbooks for primary school classes for grades K through three. A copy of the list will be attached to board members' agendas as Appendix E. I, out-of-state field trip. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the out-of-state field trip for the Buckeye High School varsity baseball softball teams to attend a trip to Chattanooga, Tennessee. The dates of the trip are 328-17 through 4-1-17. The students will pay for all related expenses. Item J, Memorandum of Understanding, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve a Memorandum of Understanding with the University of Akron for the 2017-18 school year. The University of Akron will provide instructional services to qualifying Buckeye students for university credit. A complete copy of the MOU will be held on file in the Treasurer's Office. And Item K, Agreement with the ESC of Medina County, resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the County Service Agreement with the Educational Service Center of Medina County. For 2017-18 school year, a copy of the contract will be attached to board members' agendas as Appendix G. Motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Any questions, comments? Um, with the, uh, the amount of dollars that we're looking at for different items here and other items that we Identified, are we doing okay in our, in our finances? I believe uh, in conversations that we've had with our estimated costs on those and talking uh, with Carolyn that uh, it may require us, uh, depending on the timing of everything, which will be something we'll be talking about at our special meeting on uh, next Wednesday, um, we should be good at maybe moving at 1.5 million in uh, general fund to our uh, uh, home improvement funds. But everything that we've been talking about and looking at the, the uh, needs of the district, uh, we are in a position that we are able to uh, take care of those. Do you want to add anything to No, you are just um, allowing us to go out for bids for the HVAC. Mm -hmm. So the only expenditure out of this Roll call. Barco. Oh, I'm sorry. Stahl. Yes. Barco. Yes. Sisselich. Yes. Manson. Yes. Buckleman. Yes. Now we're going to do C. Yes. We'll go back. So item C is uh, approval of Medina County Career Center contract resolve the Buckeye Board of Education through the satellite program standards and maintenance agreement contract between <coughs> Buckeye local schools and MCCC. A copy of the contract will be attached to board members' agendas of Appendix B. And just as a, some details of that, that's the adding the PLTW course to the eighth grade and the uh, adding biomed to the high school. 
Motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Uh, comments? Uh, I'll be abstaining on this uh, vote as uh, I'm a uh, board member on that kind of career center and it feels uncomfortable. Go ahead. Thank you. I will also abstain. That is correct. Uh, the MCCC will reimburse us for the teachers. Course load that makes up their day with those courses, as well as any professional development and training that goes along with that. They also are providing all the um, permanent uh, needs for to run those programs. And so, the first year, they're also taking care of the, um, the instructional as well as the uh, um, supplies, the uh, consumables. Thank you. The syllable supplies, uh, they're also covering that for the first year. And then we will be looking at what that actual cost is and determining what um, student fees might be used for general fund dollars. But, but the students, uh, the funding for the students that are in those classes does go to first. Second reading of the following policy resolve the Buckeye Board of Education consider the policy listed below as presented. Copies of the complete policy are attached to board members' agendas at Appendix E. It's 2260 non discrimination and access to equal educational opportunity. Entertain a motion. for the following personnel items as presented. Number one, medical leave of absence. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the request for medical leave of absence for Patty Silk, Junior High LD tutor, effective February 23, 2017 until medical approval to return. Item two is employment. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve to hire Matthew Bendel as the Buckeye High School Project Lead Away Teacher for the 2017-18 school year. Mr. Bendel will be paid at master step two of the negotiated agreement. Item three, child care leave of absence. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the requested one year extension of the child care leave of absence for Emily Allred for the 2017-18 school year. Number four is resignation. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education accept the resignation of Crystal Jones, Buckeye High School language arts teacher, effective of the 2016-17 school year. Item five is a resignation. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education accept the resignation of Dr. Nicholas Baldwin, High school science teacher, effective June 1st, 2017. Dr. Baldwin's resignation is for the purpose of retirement. Item B, classified personnel. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the following personnel items as presented. Number one, employment. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve to hire Jerry McCuller as a mechanic, effective March 20th, 2017. Mr. McCuller will be paid at step one of the negotiated OPC contract pending successful completion of all required paperwork. Item two, continuing contract. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve a continuing contract for Denise Zaycar, playground cafeteria repair professional, effective March 20th, 2017. Item three, continuing contract. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve a continuing contract for Kim Moskal, 
primary playground cafeteria pair professional effective February 23rd, 2017. Item four, continuing contract, resolve the Buckner Board of Education for the continuing contract for Jesse Young, bus driver, effective 11 9 16. And item number five, Resignation resolved the Buckeye Board of Education accept the resignation of Jim Tai, maintenance, maintenance supervisor, effective March 31st, 2017. Could you add for a reason of retirement? For a reason of retirement. Thank you. And as I, Don's on me here too, for the, um, for both uh, Dr. Baldwin, I believe he's had 14 years um, of experience here and, and time that he's given to Buckeye, so we thank him for that. He's made quite an impact in our district, and also uh, Jim Tai has spent uh, 15 and a half years, I believe, and thank him for all the work that he's done um, during his time here with Buckeye. Item C, classified substitute. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education approve the following classified substitutes pending completion of all required paperwork to work on an as-needed basis for the 2016-17 school year. We have a sub-custodial and Mary Gustavo. Uh, two sub paraprofessionals, Kimberly Lewandowski and Caitlin uh, Breitkrantz, and sub secretary Kimberly uh, Lewandowski. Item D, supplemental contract approval. Resolve the Buckeye Board of Education through the following supplemental contracts pending certification as well as resignation effective for the 2016 17 school year as listed. We have two volunteer baseball coaches and one resignation of high school assistant track coach Richard Manco III. A motion, please. Motion. Second. Second. Comments, questions? I'd just like to add too that when you have good people retiring, um, we're glad to see that they have an opportunity to change their lives and do some other things that they'd like to do. Um, but it's always hard to say goodbye to people who have spent a long time at, at Buckeye, Dr. Baldwin, and, and of course Jim Pye. All right, roll call. Hanson? Yes. Sasevich? Yes. Barco? Yes. Stahl? Yes. Buckhorn? Yes. All right, as we conclude our meeting, um, uh, we'll do the board comments and then we'll um, recess to go into executive session. So board comments first. I always start at this end, so I'm going to start with them. Uh, thanks for everyone for being out tonight. It's great to be here. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Cassin, uh, a member of our community, who's a uh, very influential committee of our family. Uh, a lot of time has come to Cassin over this past weekend. He has served uh, this community every three years, starting in 1984, when he was 86 years old. He touched many people's lives. Uh, and a special memory for how it affected Buckeye. Uh, when we passed the first night of the lesson, I have to be a political person, and I was very careful not to cross those lines. On the Sunday before election day, at the sermons, he made sure he pointed out that election day was coming, and I believe we were the children. And the following Sunday, I saw a chicken hand message, and we okay. So I think now it's about a dog being passed, and he's a very important person. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. Is that the I don't have anything either. Uh, a few things. One, I want to thank uh, all the volunteers who worked on the uh, book fair. Um, Jasmine told me it was a record uh, amount of sales for their spring, spring book fair. Um, so great job there. Um, I uh, was lucky enough to go watch the junior high academic challenge team this past weekend. Thank you to the riser, Mr. Rendrick. Um, they did a great job. A lot of uh, younger kids answering questions after they were very proud of those kids. Buckeye okay, Day was fantastic. Was, my kids were waiting for balloons um, made for them, which was just awesome. Um, and uh, again, just uh, you know, my father Don and everything he did for everyone. Um, uh, the St. Patrick's Day coming up, um, it's just not going to be the same, but happy St. Patrick's Day. Everyone too. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you to the scouts for coming out. Um, my son's an Eagle Scout, so I know the work that you guys do. Just keep going and don't stop. Make sure that you get that Eagle Scout. It's the most important thing you can do right now. Um, thank you to the teachers and all the staff that came out on this day, um, this cold day. 
Um, congratulations to all our sports kids. They did fantastic this year. Um, all the kids that made it to state. Um, and thank you to Dr. Baldwin and um, Jim Ty for the years of service. Thank you. All right, then I'll entertain a motion for a recess <coughs> into the executive session for the purchase of your form. Motion, please. Motion. Second. Roll call. Ms. Salich? Yes. Barca? Yes. Manson? Stahl? Yes. Company? Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.